Well, we're on a much smaller boat here. This is a Cal 25 sailboat. It's about a 4,000 pound boat. And we are berthed in Ventura Isle Marina in Ventura Harbor on the Southern California coast. The ocean is about a half a mile behind the camera. Um, this time of year, there'll be a few gray whales swimming past there, and we actually have fog today, but uh, no icebergs. This is California, so there's never any ice. Uh, Cal 25s have uh, sailed across oceans, and uh, there was even one couple that sailed uh, Cal 25 all the way around the world. This particular boat has been floating for about 43 years, except for uh, a few days uh, off in dry dock every uh, three, four, or five years for bottom work. The last time my grandmother Bunny sailed on the ocean was on this boat, and uh, she was 98 years old then. Here is a picture of my grandmother from about 1916 when she was about 20 years old. And here is a picture of my grandmother and me a little later. We're going to cook a traditional Russian Easter dish. It's a molded cheese dessert called a paska. Now for the ingredients. First of all, cottage cheese. The recipe calls for five pounds. That's five of these. Uh, we have experimented with different cheeses, pot cheese, hoop cheese, drier cheeses. Um, we find since you drain the product after it's cooked, it, it really doesn't seem to matter that much. And for the last couple decades, we've just uh, stayed with uh, straight cottage cheese. So five pounds of that. Um, eight ounces of sour cream. That's half of this. Seven eggs. We use the whole eggs the yolks and the whites. Uh, some recipes just call for the, uh, the yolks, but uh, if you cook it slowly and carefully, you won't get scrambled eggs. And uh, we like the texture that results from the whole egg, the yolk and the white. Three quarters of a pound of unsalted sweet butter. Twenty-eight fluid ounces of sugar. It's about one and a half pounds. Um, we've cut that back a little bit. The original recipe called for a little more. I think about thirty-two fluid ounces of sugar. Um, we like it a little less sweet. Um, you can obviously cut it back more. But if you're one of those people who's worried about too much sugar or too much fat, you probably shouldn't be making this recipe. Vanilla, um, about a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Uh, you obviously can use vanilla bean if you have them. Uh, put in three vanilla beans and uh, remove them after cooking, of course. And then the candied fruit. We have green cherries, diced candied pineapple, and golden raisins. Also, maraschino cherries. These are important because they give a color to the Pasca. If you don't use maraschinos, it will well have the color of concrete. This gives it a little pink or reddish cast, which we think is kind of nice. And when you buy fruit, candy fruit in a supermarket, be careful. An awful lot of it uh, just seems to be colored candied pineapple. And uh, very important to get these uh, raisins in there.
too. Well, that's, uh, I guess we can go down below and uh, actually start cooking now. This type of gasoline stove should only be used with a lot of ventilation. We need to uh, blanch the candied fruit. Um, we need one to one and a half cups of the fruit. We don't, um, of course, blanch the maraschino cherries because uh, take the color out of them. Okay. Set that aside. Well, the next step is to mill the cheese. And um, this is a cheese mill. It forces the cheese through that grating. If you don't have one of these, uh, you can always use a spatula and a sieve. This is the uh, hardest part of the recipe in terms of effort. Is milling this cheese. Sounds like the end of the cheese. Don't need too much metal in there. Okay, now eight ounces of sour cream. It's about half of this. Now we will add about three quarters of this pound of sweet butter. 28 fluid ounces of sugar. And a tablespoon or two of vanilla extract. The candied fruit. We want to dice up the larger pieces of fruit so they'll all be about the same size. The other thing you want to pay attention to, sometimes there can be stems in the raisins. Did I mention that you should wash your hands before you do this? Yeah, that all looks pretty good. So that's going in the pot. That's a lot of fruit this time, but it's what happens when you don't measure. Uh, and then there's what happens when you don't think, or almost happens. I almost forgot the maraschino cherries. starting to look pretty nice in there. Kind of festive. Now we'll throw the eggs in and change that. I open them into a bowl first just to make sure there's no eggshell going in. And then I just break the yolk. Okay. That's the Pasca, except for cooking and draining and molding. Now the very long and slow process of cooking the Pasca. The trick here is patience. We're going to cook this 
under a medium or medium low fire and we're going to bring it to temperature very slowly. It may take an hour with continuous stirring. And that's what will give you the texture you want. I'm going to cook this until it's almost boiling. So we just when the first few bubbles start when you move the spoon across the bottom of the pot, which is usually around 205 degrees Fahrenheit. But you want to make sure those eggs are cooked. Now that the uh, temperature of the mixture has come up a bit, I've throttled the uh, stove back even more. Well, with quite a bit of steam coming off the surface, and we're just starting to get small bubbles forming in the surface. Getting there. Now we've been cooking this for about 55 minutes now and the consistency is changing. It's thickening up. If we had a wood spoon, you could probably see it coating the spoon. And if we stop stirring briefly, and the steam gets out of the way, you'll see bubbles are coming up from the hotter bottom section. So we're very, very close. And there, with the fire off, we're still getting a little boiling now. There we go. Now we'll take it off the stove to cool. Well, we've taken the Posca off the stove to cool, and after it's cooled down a little bit, then we will put it in the uh, ice chest, um, in the ice, to, uh, to cool further. At that point, uh, traditionally, the, the Posca is put into a cloth and hung overnight to drain. And then the following morning, it's taken out of that cloth and put into a mold. And a traditional Posca mold is wood, and it's a four-sided pyramid with a truncated top. So after it's drained in the cheesecloth, it's put into this mold with a, with a cloth lining to drain further another day. And then it is inverted to be uh, the pyramid shape. And uh, this one, as is traditional, has um, some routed in symbols on the side, which will then become relief symbols in the uh, Posca pyramid. And that's, uh, I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't see that. It's an, I don't know. Anyway, trust me, it's an X and a B for Christos Voskres. But a lot of people um, probably don't have a wood pyramid Posca mold. So we're going to use something a little more readily available, which is a sieve or strainer, so referred to as a chinois. And um, we're going to line it with cloth and, uh, and drain it. And then, of course, it can be inverted and we'll end up with a cone instead of a pyramid. But it also will cut out the step of the cheesecloth draining step. So we're going to just drain it the one time. So we've put the Posca into a cheesecloth and we're going to place it in the chinois strainer to drain. And it's draining. Great. Yeah, there's, it's drained quite a bit. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's still, it's still wet. It needs another day to drain. The texture looks quite nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's okay.